What's happening, party people? It's Friday. We got to break down the second half of the matchups. Get to that important in and out. Players who have been limited throughout the week, do we think that they are going to play? And those FanDuel picks, ballers on a budget, a way to save in DFS this weekend. Do not miss a single second of today's show. Foot Clan, the time is running out. Two weeks. Two, two weeks. weeks. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Just two weeks left to enter at footclangiveaway.com. Enter to win that signed Saquon Barkley jersey. He is back, and he can be up on your wall with a glorious signature. Head over to Foot Clan Giveaway. It's fast. It's free. You, you scratch our back. We scratch yours. On to the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, it's football time. Welcome to the podcast, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, that is. I am your host, Mike the Fantasy Hitman Wright. Joined by my best friend of the week, oh, Jason Moore. That's me. I'm here. I get to be his best friend for one week. It's been such a good week, Mike. It has been a fantastic week. And if you're out there in listener land thinking, man, I like Mike, but there's, there's just too much. There's too much of the fancy hitman happening. Don't worry. The fearless leader will be back on Monday. I'm, ar I'm already here. Mike. I'm talking about the the real leader of men. Mm. Andy Holloway, of course. Welcome to the show. On today's show, we're going to talk about that Thursday night game. What a game it was. Ooh. Some ups. Some downs. Oh, man. Oh, my goodness. Foot Clan Friday, and don't worry. Again, in listener land, you thought, hey, where was Foot Clan Friday last week? Well, there was an oversight. But we made good. There'll be there'll be two winners today, so don't worry. Does that mean we get two drops? Uh, I don't think you need two drops All of right. that one. I just like that one. You do? Oh, it pumps me up, man. It's Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Shane Coates, you are the winner of... Oh, a $55 gift card to shopballers.com just for supporting this show on jointhefoot.com. But hold on. Ooh. Yeah. Foot Clan Friday. Nick Burrell. <laughs> we got to get it in while dad's away. As many of these drops as, as we can handle. Uh, but thank you so much for supporting this independent podcast. If you want to watch what we're doing, we're on YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. See Jason's beautiful face. <laughs> Make sure you follow us on Instagram. We're posting all kinds of cool updates over there for football purposes. That's at instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. And if you just want a behind the scenes look at our lives, you can follow us as well on the IG, the visual medium. It's the medium of the of the the youth, Jason. Yeah, I'm young. That's why you're killing it. I'm young. You're really really good at it because you're so young. At <laughs> at Jason FFL, I am at FF Hitman, and Andy is at Andy Holloway. Jason, this Thursday night matchup: the Chiefs, the Broncos. You, if you miss the game, you look at the box score. Holy crap! Thirty to six. Patrick Mahomes. And crew, they dominated. Oh, man. The Denver Broncos. you got to start with the lead story. Patrick Mahomes dislocated his right kneecap on a quarterback sneak. It looked bad. Uh, the reports are all over the map. The Chiefs are awaiting an MRI. Uh, and the quote, if there's no damage, the best case will be around three weeks. It could get worse than that. I have had if my my inside sources because mm -hmm. one of my best friends, his wife is a doctor, ah. and she said if it's just a dislocated kneecap, no problem. Like he he should return soon, but that's that's without knowing the MRI damage. 
Uh, allegedly, the spirits were high after Patrick Mahomes exited the x-ray room. So, at least on the surface, it seems like the Chiefs are not worried. Jason, are you worried? Yeah, so minimum, you're you're missing three games here. The hope is that if he doesn't need to have surgery right now, that he would be able to wear a knee brace to stabilize the patella and be able to play. Now, the thing about his schedule is if, if you were to play that out, then that week three is right before – missing three games and then coming back, that's going to be a Chargers game right before their bye week. Right. This is your franchise guy. So maybe that three weeks turns into four games, which turns into five weeks – which is yuck. There's also the possibility that they, they being the Chiefs, force him to have surgery now. A uh, good friend of the show, pro football doc, he, sa he believes he will definitely need surgery. It's just a matter of whether they make him do it now or whether he's going to mm. wait until the offseason to do it, similar to what happened to Matt Stafford. He had this injury, I think, in 2009 or so, and um, played through it and then had the surgery in the off season, the team might not want to risk the long term effects because if he comes back without the surgery, there is a heightened risk of more long term effects. So we'll have to wait. We'll have a lot of information today. This is the perfect example of make sure you're following uh, the accounts on Twitter, on Instagram, because we'll have news today. We will share it. But he he's gone for a couple weeks, and that means your Tyree kill is massively hurt. Your yeah, Travis so let's talk Kelsey. about it. So Matt Moore, as far as a backup quarterback goes, you could do worse. You could do way worse than Matt Moore. He is, in my opinion, very competent. I think that he can get some wins. And the upcoming schedule of Green Bay, Minnesota, Tennessee, and the Chargers, I think Matt Moore can hang and give you enough that the Kansas City Chiefs have the ability to win these games, keep the Chiefs in the hunt while they wait for Patrick Mahomes. The fantasy implications, though. Now, do they do they trade for Kenny Stills? Oh just, man, just just because of the connection, and they the best, probably should the best friends with Matt Moore and just have him throw bombs. Or could that become Tyreek? Could could if Matt Moore what, say you, like, "Oh, this guy's even better than Kenny Stills"? I didn't think it was possible. You saw it on on the the one that Tyreek Hill took to the house. That play, and they kind of highlighted it on the on the broadcast, but. It looked like that was just a connection between Matt Moore and Tyreek Hill to me. Obviously, I'm not the coach. I don't know what play was called. But it looked like Tyreek was just running a crossing route, and then Matt Moore saw the open field and just threw him open, mm -hmm. which is what you should do when you have a speedster like Tyreek Hill. So hopefully things won't be uh, just a complete downturn for, for Tyreek Hill and crew. I mean, it will. It it will be a massive. It it'll go down, but it, that's see. That's what I'm trying to argue. Will it be massive? I think it will be massive. The difference between right. Pat Mahomes to Matt Moore is a massive difference. The total fantasy points between those guys will be drastic, and therefore the weapons will. Now, that's not to say you you can't start Tyree Kill or Travis Kelsey. They'll be startable assets, but they're not going to have those weeks where they're the number one. Uh, at the position regularly or top five, I think you're going to see kind of like what's happened with uh, Michael Thomas. He's still been a startable asset, he, but he's not dominating on a weekly basis outside of one game. So what what about the running game here? Yeah, that's what I want to talk about. Talk about devastating. Damian Williams as – like I, I supported Damian Williams. I was part of the truther category. Jason certainly was not as oh, he sips his mug. It feels good to know that Andy Reid knows the truth about Damian Williams. Because he has been left in a body bag. Yeah. After Damian Williams came back, got a whole bunch of work, and then has been thrown to the side. LaShawn McCoy was the starter. Daryl Williams was almost the exclusive third down back. And you can look at the box score and that – uh, Williams, Damian Williams, he got some work there in the fourth quarter, but the game was out of hand, and they put Damian in, and Damian was super ineffective. Yeah, Damian it's, was nine for seven. He, he had – Go ahead. He had less than a yard per carry, whereas Shady was 12 for 64. He looks like the better player, and they're putting in the better player on the field. That makes sense to me. Now, on the Denver side of the ball – Oh, goodness gracious. I, I felt as good as I could feel and as bad as I could feel with these – Two running backs because on our Sirius XM show, right? 
I made the bold proclamation that Royce Freeman will get a touchdown tonight. Like you, you put me on the spot. I said yes, he will one hundred percent get a touchdown. He did. But my start of the week was Philip Lindsay, and that feels bad. That feels really bad because the Kansas City Chiefs, who have averaged the last four weeks giving up 190 rushing yards, and then they lose their best defensive lineman, and Chris Jones was out again. And then Phillip Lindsay all of a sudden couldn't break through the Chiefs. De I, did, I couldn't wrap my head around why the Chiefs all of a sudden could play great defense. And, and I will say this. I wondered if there was some rallying nature because – the the pick six or the 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 uh, the sack fumble the sack fumble six pick six just sounds so much better sure was right after the Mahomes injury you know what I mean like you, but they were well I mean I got aside from the first drive the Kansas City defense was dominant and to me it looked like Tyron Matthew was living in the box he, they didn't have to worry about Joe Flacco throwing the ball so they just completely sold out to stop the run. And it worked because that's, that's a good point. Because the offensive line for Denver cannot hold up. Henceforth, why they were my streaming defense of the week, Jason. Hey, look, I was I owe you an apology <laughs> on that because I was not with you on that streaming defense of the week. I know a lot of people they believed in you. They picked them up and they played them. I know you did, and everyone who listened to you is a better person. That for one it. felt you don't get them all right. But that one feels when you when you get a call right on an island game, it feels really, really good. Just remember that the next time I get something wrong. <laughs> uh, any other takeaways from this game? Um, Cortland Sutton's super good. Yes. Uh, Manuel Sanders was able to get enough work that you weren't disappointed that you started him five for sixty. No offense. Holy is, crap! It's exactly what I've been saying. The, the matchup was perfect, but I don't. I'm oh, not going to trust. And the opportunity was perfect uh, as well. Absolutely. I mean, it, it, you know, he's he's not ready. This is The game is too big for him as a rookie right now. Five targets, walked away with one reception for seven yards, two brutal drops that I can think of off the top of my head. It will be better for Noah Fant, but perhaps it is not the rookie season. All right, Jay, let's talk about players who are going to be on the field. What's it going to be, McFly? Are you in? Um, Saquon Barkley. He's practicing in full this week. He's in. Just in time. Uh, which, Wayne Gallman. It, he, irrelevant. Yeah, irrelevant as well. Todd Gurley. Todd Gurley. <laughs> McVay has his, uh, yeah, looking good to maybe possibly play whatever. Uh, if I've got a pick right now, I would say in. I still think he is up in the air. So that would relegate Malcolm Brown to. Malcolm Brown. To nothingness. Has not participated Wednesday or Thursday. I think he is either out or very limited in, so he's nothingness, yes. David Johnson did not practice Wednesday, limited on Thursday. He's in. Rex Burkhead, which it doesn't have an impact necessarily for Burkhead. It's an impact for James White and Sony Michelle. Uh, is Burkhead he, back? He was limited Thursday. I'm going to say he's active for this game. Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams is going to be out. He's not been practicing. He has still been dealing with the turf toe. And, uh, you know, I think next week is optimistic. Geronimo Allison. Geronimo Allison is out. There's no way he's going to pass the concussion protocol this quick after the brutal hit. MVS. Uh, we're, we're in a Packers trio right yeah, here. Yeah, Marquez Valdez-Scantling not participating in practice at all so far this week. It is possible that he is out. I'm going to say he's in. He played through it during the game. But it sometimes it gets worse after the game and things swell right. up. I think he's in, but he will be limited. Oh! The Lazard King. All systems go. We are pumping up this guy. Oh, I know. This is uh, people are people are going to start him when they shouldn't. Like he is the perfect guy. Where it's like I've got nobody. I need to find someone who's just available on waivers. My waivers are sparse. That's the situation where you play Lazard. You don't play right. Lazard over other active yes. good players. Don't force him into your lineup. But when you've got a drop like the Lazard King, <laughs> we talk about him a lot. So understand the nuance of the fantasy footballers. Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper, uh, he intends to attempt to practice Friday. I do not believe he will play this Sunday in a very important game against the Eagles. Marquise Brown. Uh, Marquise Brown remains sidelined Thursday I think if I have to pick, I'm going to say he's out. 
It sounds like Josh Gordon is going to be out. That would be an upgrade to Philip Dorsett, who got a practice in on Thursday. A.J. Green, sounds like we got a ways to go. John Brown, he's got the groin, Ugh, but, ah. but limited in – he was limited on Thursday. Yeah, he, he it's it's worrisome for my – he was my start of the week. Uh, I've kind of pivoted to Brandon Cooks as my start of the week because of this groin, but uh, if he gets a full we'll, – We'll find the practice report. Hopefully, he's a full participant in today's practice. Deshaun Jackson, I know you traded for him, Jason, in our league of record. Really, a just a I'm calling a, my shot. A hail mary. I'm calling my for shot. The so here's the thing: he missed practice again. He's been out of practice the whole week. Um, head coach Doug Peterson has started calling him day to day instead of week to week. I believe he will play this week, and I don't believe he will practice this week. So it's scary. But this is a Sunday night – this is a bright lights game. This is a game that says the whole world is watching, must win. You're talking a divisional matchup against the Cowboys. If DJX can be out there, this is where he wants to shine. I think he, I think he plays. And when he's out there, I'm going to play him. George Kittle popped up on the 49ers practice – or uh, the injury report – and a quote from him, he <laughs> says, they just say that to mess with you guys. Yeah, so, Kittle's not worried. Kittle's I'm not in. worried. Now, someone maybe we are worried about, Darren Waller. Oh, oh man. Goo, goo, boo, boo. He's got, he's got a boo, boo, but this is – he's He's been wearing a vest made of, of go, go gold bullion. bullion. <laughs> Look, he got paid. He – he popped up on Thursday's practice report as a downgrade. Now that's a that's an issue because remember they're coming off of the bye, so this was not a situation where he was injured. This is a new injury that has popped up late in the week, so that means something happened to practice, and in those situations, players oftentimes miss the game. So you need to be prepared if you're the Waller owner for a pivot, a pivot to a, a Jason Witten if he's on waivers. Um, s someone like that. You don't need to pick him up now, but you just need to know there is a chance he doesn't play. I'm going to say he's in. I but, lean that way too. But be prepared. Chris Herndon, New York Jets tight end. It, all systems say he will not be playing, but to me he is still a good stash with the upcoming schedule, especially if you're living in the tight end sewer. Delaney Walker, limited. I expect him to play. Yes. Jimmy Graham gets his usual rest because he is a walking corpse. Eric Ebron, Who's down with the sickness didn't practice? Is that does that make you nervous? Uh, Are you happy to play Eric Ebron? Never. Um, yeah, I mean, he he should be okay. Watch the practice reports. I mean, the game's not till Sunday. And then we have Jared Cook, who did not practice on Thursday. Not only did he not practice, but then uh, reports came out that the Saints are possibly interested in trading for Tyler Eifert. Those things could very well be connected. I'm going to lean that Jared Cook is out. If Tyler Eifert goes to the Saints, what is your level of excitement? Uh, it's pretty good. I mean, I'm, I would be very excited to have Tyler Eifert once Drew Brees comes back, which isn't too far away now. That would be pretty cool. All right. Remember to check out the Sleeper app if you want some injury reports. Right away, you got to grab that Sleeper app. And hey, before we talk about the rest of this week's matchups, want to thank Sonos Move. Support for today's show comes from Sonos Move, the durable battery-powered smart speaker for indoor and outdoor listening. And I can attest of how how cool yes, this thing is. I can as well. I have a I have a few Sonos products and I love the them. The Sonos Move is awesome because it's this it's got this charging base. You can pick it up, take it anywhere, take it outside. Don't worry about it's made for, you know, to get wet, to get dust, to to even be dropped. Like this is a really rugged, awesome speaker. And I've got like Alexas throughout my house. And I've always wanted them to have better speakers and their speakers stink. But you can have Alexa on the Sonos Move. And pro tip. Here's my pro tip for everybody. Take it in the bathroom. Oh, okay. that's you wanna, a You want to listen to this podcast while you shower? Because I you, used to try to do should. that on my phone, but the speaker's not loud yeah. enough over the water. Boom. Problem solved. Look, it's a great product. The sound is amazing. You could take it anywhere. It works with Alexa. It works Bluetooth. It works Wi-Fi. Go to Sonos.com to learn more. And make sure you check out jointhefoot.com. That is our official Foot Clan community. 
a way for you to help support this independent podcast. Plus, we give you tons of cool stuff like an extra show every week. Sunday morning, the Foot Clan game day alerts. You don't have time to keep up on all the news of, of, who's, of who is in and out. Boom, an email is going to show up and let you know what's what. Tons of cool tools like our consistency charts and the about-to-be-released Stream Finder, which later on we're going to talk FanDuel, Ballers on a Budget. I use the Stream Finder to help me get my pick this the week. The Stream Finder is awesome and will be up today. Oh, man, you're putting them on blast. I am. I'm saying we're doing it. So check it out. That's jointhefoot.com. And, Jason, I I was going to try and let it go, but I, I just can't. Okay. While you were thanking today's sponsor of Sonos, yes. it 100% sounded like you have a Lexus going through your house. Uh, <laughs> like the vehicle? <laughs> I, I imagine, drive a Lexus I in my like, house. I need to go to the kitchen. <laughs> So <laughs> yes, that's both an awesome house and an awesome way to get around so, your house. So I hope that the people at home heard that as well and got a chuckle. I have a Lexus in my house. <laughs> Let's get to the rest of the matchups. Fantasy forecast. All right, if you don't hear us cover a matchup today, that's because we did it yesterday. And the great thing about podcasts is there everything it is it is there yes i mean many many good things about the podcast format but go back to yesterday if you missed it 49ers undefeated just like everyone outside of san francisco thought they would be five and oh they take on washington on the road washington struggling at one and five we have a 41 and a half point over under 49ers heavy favorites almost almost 10 points jason how are we handling this situation Let's talk about the quarterbacks. Jimmy Garoppolo, is he streaming for you? Uh, he is a low-end streamer to me. Uh, you, you, you've just not needed him to do much. Washington is allowing the third most passing touchdowns per game, over two passing touchdowns a game. Sure, and uh, I totally get that the matchup is good. I actually think Dante Pettis is a fine play this week. If Debo Samuel is out, looks like he's not even going to travel with the team at this point. That's what it looks like. I know we've talked about Dante Pettis and the ups and downs, but he's on the field, he's running routes, he's had a couple of missed opportunities, and this is the type of defense where you're going to be fine. But I think, okay, Dante Pettis, George Kittle, let's say those two have a decent game each. I don't know that that's enough to add up to make Garoppolo a great play. And when I stream, I'm really looking for someone who's got the chance to throw four. And I just don't think the weapons are there to, to have an explosive game, especially because while they're bad against the run, they're also equally or bad against the pass. They're just as bad against the run, and that's what San Francisco wants to do. This is a great game for Matt Burita, for, for, for Tevin Coleman. Yeah, bo just, both running backs are in play for me. Matt Burita is my start of the week. I think they're both going to eat in this matchup. The, the one who will not eat is the elder statesman, Adrian Peterson. If you picked him up and you played him against Miami. Congratulations. Yeah, excellent. 23 for 118 yards. The volume was there. The production was there. It will not be there against the 49ers defense. They are number one. Number one against fantasy running backs. You do not want any part of this matchup. Here's, a, here's a fun stat on the, uh, the, wide, receivers, the wide receivers for the 49ers. Uh, they have a combined 570 receiving yards okay. on the season, the okay. whole team. That is 92 fewer yards than Chris Goblin. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's that's the concern. They don't need to throw the ball. Sure. <laughs> the team that will need to throw the ball, though, is Washington. Terry McLaurin, who I don't know if you saw it, Jay, but there is video evidence. Terry McLaurin, not a huge fan of Scary Terry. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, that's great news. That means we get to we get to give him a nickname, or what, does that what? mean that the? Because I know the fantasy community is kind of they've rallied around at the F one McLaurin, right? But I just feel like that's not ours. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not a very footballers esque nickname. It's it's certainly okay. a a strong one. It's much better than Scary Terry. So we will remove Scary Terry from the vernacular here now, on the fantasy footballers. Oh really? Scary is that Terry a rule. What, the man doesn't want it. Okay, I need to go watch the video. In the meantime, I will I will trust you and seven respect or, the man. Seven or more targets every game, fifth in yards per reception. He is dominating 
for a rookie, a rookie on a crappy offense. Yes, this is. But he playing him this week. But this is a really bad matchup for Terry McLaurin. You want to know what else is a bad matchup? Chicago. You want to know what else is a bad matchup? New England. Mm -hmm. Dallas isn't that great. Yes, and he was a top 20 wide receiver in two of those, and he was better than expected against New England. So I'm tempering expectations here. I see I see Terry McLaurin, you know, as weekly having a top 10 upside uh, as as a start. This one, I temper that. I say he's a he's a low end wide receiver two, a high end wide receiver three. There are plenty of situations where I would bench him, but I'm he is definitely not someone that I think you have to right now as our consensus wide receiver 25 he's in the average lineup the Jaguars at two and four take on the Bengals at 0 and six 43 and a half point over under the Jaguars are favored by three and a half Gardner Minshew it was a little bit disappointing last week he has been very very safe the ceiling has not been there but I think that the ceiling is is here against the Cincinnati Bengals. They have allowed four top 10 quarterback weeks. Their secondary is completely depleted. They will be without their two starting cornerbacks. This is a very positive situation for Gardner Minshew. The only thing that can hold Gardner down, besides like Shears, Mm -hmm. Leonard Fournette, he also could have himself a game because the Bengals are 32nd against fantasy running backs. They're also 29th against fantasy quarterbacks. So it's very possible that both of these guys have sensational games. Where are you in the quarterback, running back situation for the Jaguars? So I I think that this line for the Jaguars is wrong. This Right now, 23.5 points is the implied team total for the Jaguars. Does it mean you think it's incorrect or it just is no, you, I think you don't it, like it? I think it is. I don't like it because I believe that they will outproduce 23 and a half points. All right. I think this is a good matchup for most players and Cincinnati has been terrible in all phases. Period. But terrible. They're, they're bad to the running backs and they're bad to the quarterbacks. But you want to know where they really get killed? Quarterback to running back. The mm. dump off passes have been uh, something they can't handle and even though that's not the perceived skill set of Leonard Fournette they are using him in the receiving game a plenty and so this could be one of those games where you have a receiving touchdown for uh Leonard Fournette and Gardner's fine and Leonard Fournette is fine I do agree though that I mean Fournette is obviously a must start every week this week he's got the potential to be you know the number one running back on the week uh, the nice thing is that the Bengals defense that hasn't been able to stop anybody, they did not lose an important piece sure. of their D-line. Because what I have learned is that if you're like the Broncos and you can't stop the run and then you lose a, a great that's defensive line, That's lineman, how you upgrade? That, then you get good at the run. Or if you're the Chiefs and you can't stop anybody and you lose Chris Jones, now you can stop the run. Well, one of these teams did lose an important part of their defense. The Jacksonville Jaguars traded away Jalen Ramsey, true shutdown corner. Does that give you any hope for Andy Dalton and perhaps Auden Tate, who is on the field all the time? Uh, Auden Tate is somewhat interesting in the sense that um, – Tyler Boyd is up and down, um, and you know if if AJ Buya, who's still there for the Jags, Buya. But the reality is the the Jags didn't lose Jalen Ramsey this week. the The Jags lost Jalen Ramsey a month ago. They've been sure. without him the last three games. So when you look at what the the Jaguars are giving up per position, they're just middle of the pack as a defense. They're 16th against quarterbacks, 19th against wide receivers, 14th against tight ends, and that is what I expect to happen. So yeah, Andy Dalton can get it done, but I think the uh, you know you can't run with uh, Auden Tate and Tyler Boyd forever. You need to get AJ Green back. You need to get John Ross back. That being said, if you haven't watched the Auden Tate highlight reel, uh, which is basically just his targets last week, I mean he was incredible. Every single reception he made was awesome. He's a big dude, so I, I think you could still start both of those wide receivers in a pinch. DJ Chark, yes, please. D.D. Westbrook, my sweetie. 
things have been getting better for him. I think that you can play him as a wide receiver three in this matchup. Jeff Swaim or whoever seems like the starting tight end for Jacksonville. Let me tell you this, Jason. Okay. Inside look at my dynasty life. One of my dynasty leagues, I had been holding on to Jeff Swaim after he, you know, he took the job for Jacksonville. I was put in a very tight situation this week where I have uh, no Vance McDonald, no Greg Olson. Okay. I'm looking at starting Jeff Swaim. Oh no! And I said nay. Yes, that's what I was. I was going to say the same thing. I said nay. I went to the waiver wire <laughs> in a dynasty. In a dynasty, fantastic. League, and I picked up Foster Moreau. Did you drop Oak, Jeff Swain? I did. Okay, I was going to say at this point, if if you're if that's the decision, that was, yeah. I mean, if like if I'm not going to play him now, I'm never going to play him. But Foster Moreau, uh, the second tight end for Oakland, who has been getting some run now, in which that's a name you should should be aware of. If you if Darren Waller goes out mm. and your waiver wire is it's going to get a little morose in there. <laughs> See, there's a the, uh, I, you have the perfect setup with the island of Doctor Moreau. It's right there, okay. Jason. Uh, they're both great. And you go with morose. Well, if he has a bad game, okay, that's that's <laughs> fair. But yeah, Foster Moreau, you've probably never heard of him, but at least know who he is. Moving on to the next matchup, the Chargers, the Titans, forty point over Wait. under. Real quick. Oh, sorry. We didn't cover Joe Mixon. Oh, my gosh. You People are People need correct. to know what to do with Joe Mixon. Right now, he's our running back 17 uh, consensus-wise. This is, uh, like we said, they're, they're a middle-of-the-pack defense in general. The Jacksonville Jaguars are. Um, they're actually the most beatable at running back. And I think you've got Mixon. You've been starting him week in and week out. But he's only had one good performance and one decent performance here's his here's his fantasy finishes on the year 61 which is that's incredible that's incredible to do that because there's yeah. not that many running back the 32 teams and oh goodness. was that week one yes that was week one but then he followed that up being the running back 49 he got injured had the ankle issue running back eight 34 26 and 41 I think he is you know around the running back 20 this week Maybe a maybe running back Hopefully. fifteen. His, so that says you probably are playing him. His opportunity has been so limited, especially in the passing game. Hopefully the Bengals figure out that they should utilize him that way. Chargers, Titans, forty point over under. The Titans are favored by two points. They're both coming in with two wins, four losses. The Titans are making a quarterback change to Ryan Tannehill. Marcus Mariota will be sent to the bench. Any interest in playing Ryan Tannehill against the Chargers, who are ranked eighth against fantasy quarterbacks. None whatsoever. This Perfect. offensive line is trash. When Ryan Tannehill came in in replacement of Mariota last game, he was getting the same treatment from the offensive line that Mariota got, which was they disappeared. Um, and Phillip Rivers, I'm treating the same way. He is on the road against Tennessee. I'm I'm finding a different option. Yeah, the, besides you know, Phillip Rivers, it's it's pretty crazy. The only the only uh, match up here, uh, both directions. It seems like on paper, at least is a good play is Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry's been right. good for the most part. Uh, I made James Conner my start of the week last week when he was the running back one because the Chargers defense can't stop the run. Now James Conner catches a bunch of passes. Sure. Which Derrick Henry does not. And that, that was great, but they still have a, an incredibly difficult time stopping running backs at home. Derrick Henry should have a good game on paper. The real question in the running game is now on the other side of the ball. Yes. Melvin Gordon, Austin Eckler. What do you do? Since Melvin Gordon has come back, all he's done is take away our beautiful Austin Eckler. Smell like ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And uh, he hasn't been good himself. The Chargers haven't been good. They lost their Pro Bowl center, Mike Pouncey. Everything appears to be going poorly with the sole exception of Hunter Henry right now. So... I, I was asked, I was on a local radio show this morning and was asked the question of Melvin Gordon or Matt Burita for their final running back spot. And I went Matt Burita. And it, it's going to feel yucky if you're wrong because you're benching the big name, but Tennessee right. is really stout, good. Yeah. They're a stout defense. They're playing at home. And right now the Chargers, you know, they, they just they don't look right. I haven't seen anything on film from Melvin Gordon to say, He's got it. He looks bad. Like he does. He looks. 
I don't know, like rookie Melvin Gordon. And the touchdowns, which usually save him, just aren't coming. And this isn't the matchup that I expect him to come. That's not to say you need to bench Melvin Gordon. He's the running back 22 in our consensus rankings. But there are other backs I would play over him. Austin Eckler, are you still flexing him in a PPR league? Only in a full PPR. He's okay. still catching uh, enough balls to be a plug-in flex start. True. The The one downside for him is the return of Hunter Henry. We know that there is a huge correlation between tight end targets and running back targets, and they are diametrically opposed. And usually when one is when one position is getting a lot, the other one is not. And Hunter Henry came back nine targets and was an absolute beast of a man. It really hurts Austin Eckler's stock to me. In a PPR, though, you can still flex him. Keenan Allen, yes, you're going to play him. Mike Williams. The Titans are pretty beatable at tight end. So this is a, this is oh, interesting. Yes. If if Hunter Henry comes out and has another great game, you're going to be able to trade him for the Sun, Moon, and Stars. And I would, personally. Really? Yeah, because... I, Just because of injury risk? or No, no, no. Not because of injury risk. Because of capitalizing on Sun, Moon, and Stars. Like, I love the Sun and the Moon and the Stars, and I want them all. They are very necessary for life. Exactly. And so... But my, my point is, you, right now... Some leagues, people just assume what he did is what he's going to do. If he does it two weeks in a row, that's not to say – That's like, proof. Yes, exactly. To, th then it's proof that it's that it's a done deal and he's going to do it every week the rest of the season, and that's when you can capitalize on a monster offer. And a lot of people that have Hunter Henry also have another – You know, they have Hunter Henry, but they've got Darren Waller. They've got Mark Andrews. Right. They, they're the smart owner that saw Hunter Henry out there and picked him up like we were. Yep, it worked out. The Tennessee side of the ball, A.J. Brown, Corey Davis, no thank you. The addition of Ryan Tannehill, perhaps, perhaps it will be an upgrade in the long term, but I'm not finding out with them active in my fantasy lineup. On top of that, the Chargers fifth against fantasy wide receivers. Saints, Bears, Saints 5-1, and one, Bears 3-2, and two, 38, 38 point over under. The it's Bears, not good, Bob. The Bears are favored by three points. Teddy, two gloves, tied with Derek Carr for the lowest average depth of target. I am not playing him. Mitchell Trubisky, I don't want to play him. I haven't even heard one way in from our co-host here. I thought he'd be so excited for this matchup. He wasn't. He was. He's been hibernating. Jason. Yeah. Wake up. Wake up, Jay. <sighs> there he is. I. It's. It's a weird thing that we're able to go about our lives and our day and do this this broadcast here and i forget there's a bear in the room you forget that right across from you is a seven foot grizzly bear you who, who could kill me in a single blow who literally if you were to just look straight you there he see is nothing but him i i see you cardboard bear extraordinaire jay grizz i apologize for forgetting you are here follow him on twitter at jay grizz ffl one z all right mitchell trubisky i don't want to play him i am forced to play him in my money league but because look, my other you know what my other option was? Do tell. Joe Flacco. All right, okay. And I said, if I'm going down, I'm going down in a blaze of glory, not helmed by Joe Flacco. So Mitch Trubisky, and here's the reasoning for it. Saints, twenty fifth against fantasy quarterbacks, twenty fourth against fantasy wide receivers. This is why we were talking about Anthony Miller as a low, low sneaky start this week. Allen Robinson, let's just continue the Bears' discussion, though. Allen Robinson, seven-plus targets in every game. He's averaging 75 receiving yards. Allen Robinson, I believe, is being overlooked because he is on the Chicago Bears. You just associate bad passing offense to the Bears. But Allen Robinson has been getting it done. This is a massive test, though, because he will be getting the Marshawn Lattimore experience I'm downgrading Allen Robinson. Yeah, he's he's been okay, okay, but now you have a great cornerback on him and a worse. But see, that's what th he's been more than okay. No, he he has. I mean, right now through six games, if you actually look at his pace, he's on pace for 99 receptions and 1,200 yards. Yeah, that's what that's but that's what I mean. Where he's being overlooked, right? People, it's not getting the respect. You he still deserves. think, oh, it's Allen Robinson. He's been okay. No, he's been he's been very solid. He just has. He only has two receiving touchdowns on the year, which they both came in week five against Oakland, but two touchdowns, it 
analytically, it does not jive with the amount of yardage that he's putting up. He should have more touchdowns. We'll see if the positive regression is there for him. Yeah, and it's also tough because you've seen some of these games where he succeeded. I mean, his two best games, Minnesota and Oakland, that was without Mitchell Trubisky. So you worry like, oh, sure. okay, he's getting that starter back. Woo! Well, I mean, he was good versus Green Bay in week one, over 100 yards. The running back position for the How Bears. How about against Denver and Washington? Moving along. Great matchups. <laughs> moving along. David Montgomery. David lacking my opportunity. Only 12 touches the week before the bye. Where are your, where's your stance this week? This is a terrible uh, week for him. Okay, and then project him moving forward. People need to know what to do with David Montgomery. So I, I still believe that David will get my opportunity as the season goes on. He has established himself as the main guy. He just hasn't looked great doing it. Like, he, But he still looks better than the counterparts, right? I'm not worried uh, about Mike Davis. So the opportunity will be there. He's a starter for a team that is going to be in winning game scripts because of the defense. I still like David Montgomery rest of season. This is a really, really tough matchup. You have a low-scoring projection from Vegas, so he, and then you expect most of the success to come in the passing game because over the last couple of years, the Saints have been one of the most difficult teams to run against. And I don't see that changing. Uh, you know, last year, they were top five against the run for fantasy. This year, they're top five against the run for fantasy. So I think that's going to continue. And because you don't have Drew Brees to go out and score on the on the Bears, I think Teddy Two Gloves is going to have a really difficult matchup. So, I mean, I would take the under in this game. You've got two wow. good defenses and two bad quarterbacks. It's the exact opposite of the Arizona Cardinals-New York Giants game. Well, two what a, bad defenses, two good quarterbacks. What about this guy? Oh. Will, will we see Alvin Kamara, a.k.a. Super Camario, the player with the most broken tackles over the last month? I do not believe we will. I, it's, Agumba got him. Yeah. Uh, Al Borland, will you see if we can get an update on if he's practiced today or what the latest? Because this is obviously a massively important player for your teams. I still don't believe that he will be in there. Did we not have Alvin Kamara in in or out? Possibly. Yes. Possibly. And if it was overlooked, totally. I don't want to I don't want to point any fingers. Yeah, he but it deleted was the Bears it out because they're playing the Bears. Yeah, he he tried to try to move away, but we caught him. Yeah. Don't worry, we got that news. He did not practice yesterday, but haven't heard on today's practice okay. yet. Okay. Yeah, the addition of Zach Zinner, the team is preparing to be without him. We were saying that you should be prepared to be without him. If he's in, you play him. That's just what happens with Alvin Kamara. Latavius Murray, though, if Alvin Kamara is out, the one place the Bears are a little susceptible for fantasy purposes, 20th against fantasy running backs, is Latavius Murray a free square, a plug and play for you? Uh, he's definitely not a free square. No, he's he's a, a guy you can plug in because he'll get volume and he could be okay. But really when Latavius Murray is going to be okay, it's going to come on the back of a touchdown. And I just don't see very many touchdowns in this game scored on the offensive side of the ball. I could, If this hits the the over, it's going to be because of defensive scoring, uh, in my opinion, from, from each side. The only player that I really like in this game at all is Michael Thomas. He's still a trustable, necessary, super high target market share type of uh, player, I, his his ceiling is you know tempered because of the matchup, but you know he's just too good to ever sit him. Jared Cook, if he plays, you can play him even though the matchup isn't great. Bears, Seahawks, or I, I apologize, Ravens, Seahawks got the Bears on my mind. Oh, Jay Gruz. <laughs> Ravens coming in at four and two, Seahawks five and one, an over under, not bad, forty nine and a half points. The Seahawks are favored by three and a half. Could have some drizzle. Oh yeah, because I mean, we're in Seattle. We could have a so we could have a, a drip of fantasy points as well. Lamar Jackson takes on Russell Wilson. This is going to be a delight to watch these two quarterbacks go at it. You're playing them both as of right now. They are my number one 
and my number two quarterback on the Ooh. week. Ooh. So I've got and Russell. But who is who? Is who? Oh, I've got Russell number one. Because oh, he is, scandalous. He's Russell Wilson, Lamar Jackson number two. This is this is a really good game. It, it's 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 in between. You know, I I talked about the the Cardinals and the Giants matchup where you've got two bad D's, two good quarterbacks. This is you've got two great quarterbacks, two middle of the pack defenses. You think of the Seahawks and Ravens like this scary defensive matchup. It's not. That neither defense is great. They are literally. Uh, I mean, across the board, they're so similar. The Ravens are 13th at quarterback, 13th against running back, 12th at tight end, 22nd against wide receiver, and the Seahawks are the same, 17, 16, 12. They're all in the teens. This is this is just NFL defenses that aren't terrible, aren't great, right. and you've got quarterbacks that are great. They're going to beat an average defense. Mark Ingram averaging nearly 15 rushing attempts per game. Uh, Gus, the Gus bus did outsnap Ingram this past week, but I think that I think Ingram is still a safe running back to play. Chris Carson averaging 23-plus opportunities per game. He is the workhorse, and he is delivering. He's the new Marshawn Lynch. 100-plus rushing yards in three straight games. Yeah, I mean, they, you know, look, they found success with Russell Wilson and Marshawn Lynch. They won a Super Bowl with that, and now that's what they're replicating now. They've got their Marshawn Lynch back. They found him. If he stays healthy, they're going to be a great offense. And – and Chris Carson helps Russell Wilson. Sure. So, you know, he opens everything up. Uh, you know, what, what are you going to stop? You, you, can't, you can't just focus on Russ because Chris Carson will eat your lunch and be a real bully. <laughs> I'm taking your sandwich. So, I mean, you're going to start most everybody in this game. We don't know whether which, or not. Which Tyler Lockett shows up, Jason? Because it's either five or fewer targets – or double digit. Um, in this game, I'm going to guess it's the double digits. Oh, what it, a pivot! Yeah, I was. I, I saw was, it happen. Well, the thing is, is it's irrelevant because you, on these low targets, him? yeah, he gets a touchdown. I mean, he's he's going to be good on almost every week. Right now, you've got him just dominating. Tyler Lockett is. Let's see here. He is currently. Give me 10 minutes. Wow, what is happening he, over there? I, I, I wanted to see where he is. He's the wide receiver 12 right now on the season. So he is he's a wide receiver one, and he's pretty consistent. He's had four of his six games as a top 24 wide receiver. Obviously, you're going to start him, but I you know, I think it's it's pretty irrelevant whether he has few targets or more targets. It's kind of like the arguments we made in the offseason about Russell Wilson. It, I don't care how he does it. If, if, if he's up against a really good passing D, he's going to run the ball. And he's going to score rushing touchdowns. If if it's the opposite, he'll just if he only throws the ball nineteen times this game, guess what? He's going to have a great game. Like sure. his, that's just what happens with Russell. Then how about his other weapon, DK Metcalf, who's actually put together a pretty nice rookie season. Only has the one really bust of a game, which was Arizona, which was shocking because that's the only. That was the only time Arizona hasn't given up a top 10 quarterback performance. Other than that, though, he's living right in that 60-yard range with the opportunity to score a touchdown. DK Metcalf as a wide receiver three. You in? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, right. in, I'm in on that. I mean, I don't have Russell Wilson and Lamar Jackson as my number one and number two and then not want their receiving options. Marquise Brown, we're looking for a practice update. Hopefully we'll get it before the end of the show. If he's active, are you playing him? Um, if he, if Marquise Brown is active, he I did am, not practice today. He did not. No. All right. Yeah. He's probably not playing then. Yeah. I, yeah. And then that means if he's playing, I'm less inclined to play him because the re-injury factor or the, just the decoy factor. Sunday night, Eagles three and three Cowboys three and three Cowboys Must win favored by three 49 <sighs> point over under. This should also be an excellent game. Carson Wentz, he just keeps coming through as a top 10 guy, five of six weeks, sixth highest air yards per completion rate in the league. He is, he's in. Dak Prescott, I think he's more questionable, even though the matchup is great. He's a bigger question to me than Carson Wentz. Jason, are you playing Dak Prescott as a quarterback one this week? I have Dak Prescott as quarterback 11, so yes. Um, he, he, my rankings, though, 
few. That was my relief. Oh, okay. I didn't know if that was like there are a few no, of something. That was a PH few. Oh, okay. It really sounded like an F. Few. Thank you. What's how would you pronounce them differently? Few. Like I have a few things. That's a real. F- 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 okay. And if if it's a few, it's more. Oh, wispy. it's a few. It's like few. Oh, you're so you're really going after that H. Yeah, because few. Few. You know, it's like you're wiping well, the sweat was, off your forehead. Well, that was now you added a W. Well, but th- it's closer few. to that. It's closer to having a W than few. Like, have you I ever? Don't, I don't wipe my forehead and go few. Have you ever grown a, like a few Manchu facial hair? I have not. But uh, <laughs> back I, to the game. So I've got Carson Wentz and Dak Prescott both as as quarterback ones. I agree with you that there's a little bit more risk on the Dak side. I mean, there sh- I mean there shouldn't be. There shouldn't be because the Philadelphia secondary is terrible, but Dak is missing Amari Cooper. Dak could be missing Randall Cobb if he's not missing Cobb, he's got a hobble cop. Mm, Cobb hobbler. Yeah. Um you he's missing his left tackle. He's missing his right tackle. That's the bigger Zach issue Martin for me. was downgraded in practice this week. He's still expected to play, but if the offensive line against the Eagles really good D-line is giving Dak pressure, I think you're going to see another one of those games where he might get off to a slow start, have to battle his way back, air it out, and be fine. That's why we love Michael Gallup. That's why if you want to take a shot on Devin Smith, who should be active this week, I'm fine with that. Um, But Carson Wentz just has been getting it done too often, and I really hope, oh, I'm trying to will it into existence that DJ plays. You know what we need to bring up, though, Jason? Oh, yes. Water bet. We made an off-air water bet. Well, it was on air. It was it, it, on it, it, the Sirius XM okay. radio show. So we have a water bet this week. I am taking Jared Goff against the hapless Atlanta Falcons. You are taking Carson Wentz, who is the much better performer on the year, and Dallas could be in their own secondary trouble. Yes, but so I, I believe they are missing two of their cornerbacks, Byron Jones, who's such a good player, uh, is not expected to play as of right now for this weekend. So I, you know, this is this is such an important game for these two teams. And when that happens, you're either going to be really happy or really sad because either the defense has come to to just have this interdivisional, low-scoring, rugged affair, or the quarterbacks start catching fire. And I think because of the the lacking of secondaries for both teams, that's what I'm expecting this week I think you're going to beat the over and have a have a really nice game so that means we're playing the wide receivers Michael Gallup in a smash situation here either he's the number one and he'll get it done or he's the number two and he'll get it done I like Michael Gallup a lot this week Alshon Jeffrey can we please stop doubting Alshon Jeffrey and his target volume you you have to stop doubting him at this point thank you I mean he now (laughs) let me let me test that. So these last three games, nine targets, eight targets, 12 targets. That's a phenomenal. Uh, that would be a target pace of 155. Targets. Oh, my goodness. 55! Wow. Wow. But no d no d no d in those games. The only game that d was there in week one, you only had six targets for Alshon. And five for 49 with a touchdown. Terrible outing. You're right, Jason. That's I'm only talking <laughs> targets here. So I do think, you know, d coming back is bad news for Alshon. If, if d is out, Alshon will eat again. On the running back side for the Philadelphia Eagles, Jordan Howard, Miles Sanders. It's been a weekly battle. Miles Sanders appears to have more of a role in the passing game. It's still not high volume. Only three targets this past week, but those three targets were three receptions for 86 yards and a touchdown. Darren Sproles, I don't expect him to play. Miles Sanders, can you trust him, even if if it's three targets, but at least they're targeting him downfield? Um, I don't think you can trust him. You can't put your, uh, you know, your, your money behind him. But I do think that the this is an exploitable matchup. The running back two has really had success against Dallas, and a lot of that has come through the air. If you had to say which running back here for the Eagles is considered the running back two and more involved in the passing game. Then, then that's Miles Sanders. So if I had to pick one of these guys this week, and it's really, really tough because the touchdown upside is always going to be on Jordan Howard's side, 
you know, which which means the ceiling is Jordan Howard. But I actually think the floor, if you're in any kind of PPR league, is going to be Miles mm. Sanders. I lean on the Jordan Howard side. Zeke is going to eat. It's It hasn't been what you've hoped for with Elliott, but he's quietly getting it done. And if Amari Cooper is out, Zeke should see more targets. It's a terrible, terrible matchup for him. But that's he'll get it done through the air, I believe. Yeah, I mean, last, last week, Dalvin Cook, who's currently the, the running back two on the season, he was the running back 19 last week because they were able to beat them through the air. So, uh, you know, uh, Zeke, maybe he finishes the week as a low-end one. You're obviously sure. starting him, though. Yeah, Zach Ertz in a great situation. The Cowboys are 25th against fantasy tight ends. You were playing him anyways. Dallas Goddard worth the the stash. He really low-end play if you're scraping the bottom of the barrel like I talked about in my starts of the week. Monday night, it's going to be a banger. Are you ready for some football? Patriots, 6-0. and Jets, 1-4. and <laughs> Over under 42.5 points. 42.5, and, and the Patriots are favored by 9.5. That puts the Jets' implied total at 16.5, even with the return of Spleen Darnold. I'll take the over with Spleen in there. Okay. Yeah, All right, I mean, so you're so you're excited then. I am. You're not, ready for some football. Yeah, I I think, I mean, it's hard to say this, and it's always going to come back to bite you whenever you, whenever you say something like what I'm about to say. But I think the Jets are going to exceed expectations here, and play better than we think. Now that's hard to do against the Patriots. No one has been able to do it. You know, every every week when I scroll in our dock and I and I just remind myself how good the Patriots defense is. Look, the Patriots are very embarrassed about their defense against tight ends. Right now on the season, <laughs> they are only the second best. Yeah. Uh, giving up only 4.4 points to tight end. They could improve that this week. They could. They could go to number one. Right. Be which is where they are against Everything quarterback, else. running back, and wide receiver. So it's, it's a tall task, but we have to keep in mind these numbers – while I'm not taking anything away from the incredible real-life defense of the Patriots, these numbers are still skewed because they've been playing nobodies. They've been playing third-string quarterbacks. So now Donald has something to prove. Sony Michelle has received three targets each of the last two games, along with 16 carries against Washington and 22 against the Giants. Have we weathered the storm so to speak, with Sony Michelle, no. or is this just you're in the eye of the hurricane and you never know when you're gonna? Yeah, you're gonna get you're in the eye. You're gonna get soaked. Yeah, you're about to get soaked. I mean, look, Rex Burkhead is the issue here uh, for Sony Michelle. So if Rex Burkhead is not playing, Sony can get ooh good three targets as soon as Rex Burkhead is back, which could be this week. I mean, if it's not, then that's great for Sony. But if Rex Burkhead is is back and active this week. The, say goodbye to those targets to Sony. James White continues to be very safe in PPR. Also safe in PPR formats, Julian Edelman, and dare I say other formats as well. You dare. Thank because you. you're right. Yes. Uh, Josh Gordon, unlikely to play. Sneaky start. Philip Dorsett. It looks like he's going to be back. 16.2% target share, but that could go up with Josh Gordon out. Yeah, he's... Philip he Dorsett, Jacoby Brissett... These sneaky plays for New England. Are you in on this at all? Did you say Jacoby Brissett? I did. Because he's not a sneaky. He used to be on New England. I think you meant Jacoby Myers. Yes. There you go. Yes. Um, yeah. No, I do, I do like them. Um, Philip Dorsett much more so. He, he's the vet with the speed. He's been getting it done. Um, I actually think Philip Dorsett's a, a pretty good play. Sure. Uh, like, you know, you, you could certainly do worse. I would play Philip Dorsett off of waivers over the Lazard King. Mm, that makes me sad to hear, Jason. Huh? That's in fact cold-blooded yes. of you to say such a thing. Robbie Anderson, 15 points in four of his last six games with Spleen Darnold where he averages nine targets per game. Yeah. Uh, the matchup sucks, but Robbie Anderson's about to explode. He is he is a powder keg. It is lit. It's about to happen for Robbie Anderson. Jamison Crowder, he might be a safer bet in this one. Robbie Anderson's the ceiling play, but Jamison Crowder, 36% target share when he plays with Sam Darnold. As only, it's small sample, it's two only games. two games. But this is another – like I don't see that changing here, 
where you're going to have Robbie Anderson just it's going to be so difficult to throw to him. He's going to have Gilmore on him and he's not, you know, he's it's hard to get open with Gilmore. So then you've got Chris Herndon out and Anunwa on IR. So Jameson Crowder is going to get these little 4-yard targets non-stop. Le'Veon Bell 22.6 touches per game, a 3.0 yard per carry. <laughs> According to Football Outsiders, the Jets O-line has the worst adjusted line for yards, and New England has yet to allow a top 24 running back. You're playing Le'Veon Bell, you're taking the volume, and you're just taking a punch in the face. Yeah, but because, uh, it'll, it'll be worth it because the schedule after this week. Just if if you can pinch, if you can pinch Robbie and 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 hold on to Darnold and not play him and do. Darnold, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned that here. Tell me if I've already said that I, or if that was I this morning so. on the radio show. But if you were the Pat Mahomes owner, you, you're you lucky that the Thursday night was when Pat Mahomes went down. If you don't want to fight through the waivers next week, That's a good Sam point. Darnold is on yeah, your waivers. I like it. He's playing against New England. He's been you know gone. So he's on waivers, and now his schedule opens up beautifully after this. So yeah, I mean he's he's the the default low end Pat Mahomes replacement, and you can drop someone on the bottom of your roster and pick them up now. All right, Jason, it's time to open the wallet, or should I say, close the wallet? Either one works. Well, we're on a budget, right? Ballers on a budget, presented by FanDuel. Welcome to Ballers on a Budget, where we're going to give you a play that we like at a price that we like I, on FanDuel. I, sorry, I had not seen your Baller on a Budget pick, nor had I seen his price. Yes. Oh my goodness, this is such a good pick, Mike. Thank you. Yeah, look, if you want to, if you want to compete, wait, I got to go first now. That's fine. Because oh, I don't no. want to follow it up. No, but I'm going to tell people where they got to go to enter. Yes, tell them all about. Because you need the, to go the... enter the Fantasy Footballers Leaderboard Series, FanDuel.com slash Ballers. It is a weekly contest where people who finish first through fifth, you're going to get a free DFS pass. And if you win the whole shebang at the end of the year, you will get an all-expenses-paid trip to come see us in Arizona. Hang out. Watch us record a podcast. It'll be a good time. It's over thirty thousand dollars worth in prizes, and it's a limited series where only a you know a handful of our listeners are playing against each other. So it's really cool. Not everybody can get it in every week. So go to fanduel.com slash ballers. And every week is a new week to try and win. So check it out. Fanduel.com slash ballers. Go ahead, Jason. Okay, so my my uh, ballers on a budget pick is Dante Pettis. Um, he's not going to be heavily owned because everyone's disappointed with the offseason hype. But, you know, look, with Debo Samuel out and the Washington Redskins defense, nobody in the NFL is giving up more big plays and more fantasy points against than Josh Norman. And that's who Dante Pettis is going to be torching. I think it's going to be easy pickings. And he's only $5,100. Not bad. That's near the bottom for wide receiver. Went down on the two-yard line twice this past week. It, almost had a big week. Yeah, I mean, it, I think Dante Pettis has a great shot at a touchdown this week. If you get a touchdown from Dante Pettis at $5,100, you can put your money elsewhere. And now, Mike, you have the floor because this is fantastic. Thank you. So part of looking for value when you're playing on FanDuel – it's not just these players who they haven't performed or maybe they're getting a new opportunity so they're cheaper like the Lazard King who's very interesting. He's priced at the floor at 4500 Hunter Henry, the price hasn't caught up yet. These are guys that you need to look for. He came back. He's healthy. He dominated. He's only 5700 on FanDuel. That's cheaper than Jimmy Graham, Jared Cook, Gerald Everett. He came right back to a 20% target share. He's lining up all over the place as a tight end, as a wide receiver. And then what I talked about, Jason, with the stream finder, Tennessee has given up a, a top 12 points to the tight end position every week except when they played Denver and Noah Fant, who's just not getting it done. Tennessee is susceptible. And these are, by the wow. way, these are teams that are not 
not like tight end heavy teams. I'm talking about Cleveland, Indy, Jacksonville, Atlanta, and Buffalo, Buffalo, all with a top 12. I'm looking at it right now in this gorgeous stream finder tool. Very nice. Nice but, plug. Uh, well, I mean, it's just an amazing tool, genuinely. But, but Hunter Henry, he is a great play in your season long. He is a great play on FanDuel because he is cheap and has huge upside. Remember, the Fantasy Footballers Leaderboard Series. Go to FanDuel.com slash Ballers for details. Want to thank the studio sponsor before we get out of here. Pristine Auction, the best sports memorabilia site of all time. Melvin Gordon, a signed LA Chargers Speed Mini Helmet, just $59. That's fantastic. Outfit your house with awesome sports memorabilia. The holiday season is fast approaching. Oh, that's a good idea. You don't want to wait until the, the everyone is in on getting their holiday gifts. Uh, you do not. You get you get prices like this. And you right don't now. Want, you don't want to be stressed out, Jason. When you were like, oh crap, I gotta get some presents. Pristine auction, sign up, use the registration code BALLERS, get five bucks for your first purchase. Don't forget about Sunday Live. I'll see you there, and good luck, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And Foot Clan, don't forget the support for today's show comes from the Sonos Move, the durable, battery-powered smart speaker for indoor and outdoor and there I say, bathroom glorious <laughs> listening. The speaker is awesome. It's got some great uh, automatic true play tuning. Whenever you move it to a new spot, it automatically detects and it just makes the sound awesome. So check it out at Sonos.com to learn more.